Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurazo here, coming at you guys with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch. And I got a lot of cards that people should be lo looking at in this Market Watch. We got some new support for Infernities that came out, so we're going to look at some of those cards while they're a lot cheaper. But if, if you enjoy my Market Watches, make sure to smash that like button. If we can get 70 likes on this video, that would be great. Uh, if you're not subscribed, hopefully today's the, I, the day I earn your t uh, subscription. I almost want to say today's the day I earn your TCG player. <laughs> but... Yeah, we're almost at 2,000 subs, and I got something awesome, awesome, awesome planned. So make sure that you're subscribed so you can see that soon. Hopefully, we can hit 2K subs by the end of January. Also, if you're buying any cards off TCG Player, please use my fill link down in the description below. It helps out the channel to no additional cost to you. Let me know what I'm looking at in the next uh, Mark Watch in the comment section below. And before we get, I actually want to thank my YouTube channel members, uh, which are Carlin Lenker Frisk. Thank you, my man. Uh, and if I mispronounce this, I'm really sorry. Rajesh Nobles? I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, the Lone Descendant, Chaz Banks, a.k.a. Mr. Blanks, Yami Danny, Fernando Polito, Seto Kaiba's bank account, Drew Chamberlain, Shoelaced Bandit, and the Harv Carman. I want to thank you guys for being YouTube channel members and supporting the channel to this day. I know the rewards aren't that great. But you decided to help me out in the channel anyway. So I always really appreciate when people decide to be YouTube channel members. Uh, that's why I kind of never harp on the YouTube channel member uh, thing on clicky all that. Because like the fact that some people want to support me is, is fantastic. And I love doing this, right? And if it means I could afford, uh, you know, get some gas and some bills, hey, by all means, it's nice. Plus, I have a lot more money into openings and all that stuff. Like there's a reason why when I get do openings i can go a lot harder but we're gonna get right to it so chaos emperor dragon of armageddon now, i forgot this card existed i'm not gonna lie to you uh we have a place set here for 34 but earlier the cheapest near mint was 43 dollars here now this set is extinct so i can't say i'm really shocked on this card being about 40 something dollars my issue being is that once you get some of these near mints, like four copies here right that's not that much in the grand scheme of things uh, you know, you got 40 here for 45. They quickly, they don't really go up to the $50 mark. They go up to the $60, $70 mark. As you see over here on the second page, and our biggest wall is, say, five copies. You know, something like this can easily be bought out the next day. If you guys want to hype on this and grab some of these, like, more cheap copies, about $34 uh, a piece. And on a uh, 43 card, dollar card, getting it for 34 uh, especially if you want the play set for a lot later. And that's not too bad. Especially if these go up to 70. Hey, you doubled your money, right? That's pretty good overall. Uh, I would look into getting this because it's definitely more of a collector card. And I'll be honest, it looks absolutely sick. Very beautiful looking card. Uh, Link Cross. So someone in my comment section will actually mention this and want my opinion on it. And I want to say, this is actually a great pick. And I've been meaning to talk about this because while I do not believe Link Cross is going to come back... In a very long time. This card only has one printing out of Eternity Code. And we're at 77 listings right here. Meaning that whatever we have here. For Link Cross is what we get. Now these were about $2 when I said. Hey get one for the band binder. Just to have it. Right that's why I told people. Well as you see here. Uh, ideal here is trying to quick sell everything. Well after these two copies are gone. We're basically looking at $3 for near mint. With shipping all that. Uh, but once you kind of go two more pages, and as you see, yeah, there's some walls, like, seven here, but once you get to the $7 wall, it's, like, $4, you know, we go to the next page, right? Yeah, we got a wall here, but it's $5, right? Next page, it's close, with shipping, it's about $6, right? Close to $7 on the next page, right? And, yeah, there's, a, a some miniature walls, like, seven copies, all that, but... This card quickly goes up to six, seven dollars. And personally, the reason why I would actually grab, let's call it a playset now, is not only does it quickly go up, but even if cards aren't going to come back in a long time, they're still going to rise during banless season. People are still going to want them. People always like to have a band collection. If you guys don't know, and I harp on this quite a bit, people love having band cards just in case or having a band collection. It's one of my favorite things to do. I personally have a band collection. If you guys watch my collection video, I have my Link Cross in there. The one I personally played. Um, I have, I think, four copies uh, somewhere else because I ended up picking them up for very cheap. 
but this is a card I would actually uh, invest a little bit in. Now, don't go crazy, but just get a play set. You know, if it goes, if, you know, it doesn't come back, it is what it is. If it goes up to five, six, seven dollars, I mean, well, you got it for two or three bucks, right? You know, maybe you got it for like two fifty a piece. It's not too bad, especially with 77 listings here. If this ever ends up getting bought out or going nuts or somehow magically coming back, you're going to be in such a, an amazing position for someone who spent, say, 6 to $9. Now, Rescue Cat Turbo Booster 3. Now, guys, I do not like to brag too much, and I know that sounds like a lie. That's probably because it is. However, I ended up buying a collection today, and... I was kind of iffy on it because some of them weren't the best condition. It's uh, two light plays, but the light plays kind of suck because of the back. Uh, the fronts are very clean, and then one mod play. But I actually ended up getting Italian Turbo Pack Booster 3s. Now, I'm uh, shout out to my boy who got, I don't know if he wants to be named, but he knows who he is uh, for selling me these. I was very iffy on these because I did want English, but when I see Italian guys... You know, your boy gotta go hard. Alright. But I want to take a look at this card because it's a little cheaper than I thought. Uh, light plays are set. And, and he, he talked about it. He's like, I want mob play price. And I'm like, and he's like, you're going to see why. I'm like, why? Well, basically, why me to value them at 75 fully instead of 69? And I just kind of found this funny, right? You can't even blame me. But lightly plays here for $68, $70. Quickly going up to about 80s here. This is very cheap for a rescue cat. Now, we got this card reprinted finally. And honestly, it was a long time coming. Uh, th uh, there's some new archetypes that are going to be using this from what I hear. But honestly, Tri Brigade used this. Other decks are going to use this. Rescue Cat's always going to be a very relevant card, even with its errata. You know, near mids go up to about 90 here, going up to 106. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys to go crazy for this card. Uh, but if, you know, Lightly plays here for 69, so, you know, getting some near mints here, and you, you have play sets here, you know, three here for 80, three here for, you know, 80 right here. It's not that bad, although if you want to get someone with at least, like, a thousand to a couple thousand sales, it's going to look you about $85. This is a card I grabbed sooner than the lyrics. I feel like this card is always going to float in the triple digit range, and we're in, like, this weird time where this card is a lot cheaper than it should be. Uh, Maxim Gold Eldorados, though, like, if you're not a big baller, my, these are $2. I'll be completely honest with you here, I think this is a steal. 46 listings, 220 here, so, you know, this is a pretty hefty wall here. I mean, they quickly go up to threes here. I mean, there's another wall here, 91 for three. Uh, you guys get the point. Uh, this is now a solid $3 card, and honestly, this is something I would be picking up, especially if... You see people at locals, you know, offer them two bucks on it, offer them a dollar on it, right? Because it's a two dollar card. You could probably get away with a dollar, to be honest with you here. You know, trade for them. Because this is a card where whenever it's going to see a lot more play, it's going to shoot up to the moon. This card could at least be a seven dollar card for the gold rares. Um, that's at least my opinion. Now, for Maximum Gold Eldorado, oh, it's going to give me the. That's nice. You have the alternate arts here. Now, these disturb me on a level that I can't describe. If you want to grab a Lost Arts, even though you don't like them as much, for a dollar forty more, just because it's the quote-unquote more unique version, not a bad idea either. I mean, you're still spending three bucks at the end of the day, right? Stardust Dragon. Coming out of Dawn of Majesty. Now, this only has 11 listings, which I found very interesting. But near mints, because we're not going to include, you know, these two. Now, you got a Korean here. That's cute. But, you know, I kind of wish it was a filter for English. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Uh, near mints are $600, but then once this guy flies, we're looking at $700. This was $500, like, what, a month and a half ago? So, you know, now we're with Burst of Destiny. We've had Burst of Destiny for, I think, a month and a half at this point. You know, uh, I kind of get it, how this card's rising slowly, but $200, if you're getting $100 off this every time a core set drops, I mean, and then $800, Lumina, here. Not too bad. In fact, I want to look at Black Rose. But, yeah, if you guys are sleeping on Stardust, I would bite the bullet now. Uh, and if you do, please use my affiliate link. Now, Black Roses are about 485 here. Uh, 519. This card quickly but surely goes up to 600 as well. Um, as you see here, Nirmans were selling. Kind of at like the 450 range. 
uh, low 400s, right? This card really wanted to stabilize there at $500 mark, but it quickly goes up to, what was that, 600 Yeah, around the $550, $600 mark. So keep an eye on this one too, but jump on the Stardust because this has 24 listings, and I know that there's people are holding more copies. While Stardust, right, is just biting the dust, and Lightning Overdrive's been out for longer than Dawn of Majesty, so also keep that in mind. Stardust Dragon Ultimate Rare, uh... You know, you got a have mod play here for 75, and you have light plays here for 83. I mean, for an unlimited ulti Stardust, that's not that bad. Now, if you guys don't know, I actually hate ulti Stardust. I picked up a more mod play recently. Um, I was in, uh, I, I kind of didn't want to, but I ended up doing the guy a favor. Uh, it was unlimited too, which kind of sucked, but I, we came to a fair price. But, you know, my issue is with this card is it just looks ugly, and it doesn't, do the artwork justice. Now, I'm a huge fan of ultis, but when there's a bad ulti, there's a bad ulti, and I call it how it is. Stardust Dragon's a bad ulti. It doesn't look good, right? I have no attachment to this. I'm just going to see if I can trade someone who's like want to want to play with it and have fun with it. And that that's all I really care about at this point. Uh, I mean, they quickly go up to, like, you see, lightly plates here 108, but there's better cards to buy for about $8,500. I really won't buy this, to be honest with you here. But I thought I was to uh, take a look at it. Now, Odin, Father of Azir. Now, someone told me if they should buy this for $9 or look at the first sets because with Ghost Rares, that's what really counts. I mean, Lightning Plates are forty six fifty. That's pretty awful for a card that's never going to be used. 64 for Near Mints. Sure. Uh, my play is 62. Lightly Plates for 77 Okay. 77 is not that bad. Uh, Near Mint is $90. Now, I'm going to going up to about 100 here, roughly. And actually, once you look at kind of the next page, they kind of go up to like 130 you know, $200 here. So you got some cheaper Odins here for a little while. You, you got maybe, no, what, nine copies is right over here? Six, yeah, about, eh, yeah, but, oh, and then you have five here. Eh, you got quite a, a good ways until this card goes up to 200s. The issue is with when this card was 200 something, nobody was paying for it. This card has been uh, the target of buyouts before, and... I remember when this was used in 5Ds, actually. Now, I believe it was, like, a uh, Hallmark. He was facing Hallmark, right? And he would lose it three turns. And I, I really like this episode, right? Uh, the issue on spending $90 on this is it's not bad. It's just there's, again, just like uh, like Play Olympus Stardust, ultis. There's better uses for your money in this market. Right, we're gonna go over some of these, but you know, using ninety dollars on penny stocks is never a bad idea, right? Because think about it like this: if you spent ninety dollars on rescue cats, you get them for like two or three bucks, like let's say two dollars each. You got forty-five rescue cats; they go up to let's say six dollars, right, or even five dollars, right? Do the math: you doubled your money, right? And there you go, right? And you know, they're more cheaper cards, but people are more willing to pay for a five-dollar card than a hundred-dollar card. Right? That doesn't mean Yu-Gi-Oh! players are cheap. It's just, if it's cheaper and they can use it, right? They'd rather have that than something like this, right? If, though, however, you have a Ghost Rare collection and you want to grab this because of that, uh, or, you know, you want this for collection purchases, yeah, bite the bullet on 90 because either you, you pay 90 for this or you don't get the card until it's higher. Uh, or you don't get the card at all. Um, I personally have my copy because I used to collect all the Ghost Rares. I still do. Um, I believe I have every single one um, in some capacity, except for Black Wing Dragon. That's the only one I'm missing, actually. Uh, I don't know why. I just that card's very me, me and that ha card have a very weird relationship. But yeah, bite the bullet on this if you want it or you need it. But if you're looking for like to make money, no, skip this. Uh, ultis here, uh, near mints are about twenty. Okay, not bad. First day near mints are. Well, I mean, lightly plates are 40, near mints are 55. No, thank you. Yeah, I, I wouldn't buy that. I actually do really like the Loki, though. We're actually going to look at Loki because this is kind of cute. So, first edition near mints are $20 here. That's a lot cheaper. In fact, if you guys may want to pick up a copy of Loki, and if it goes up to $40, hey, that might not be too bad. Only 37 listings as well. Uh, Ultras. Uh, I want to take a look at these just to see how they were at. Like, you can get a copy for 3 bucks. I mean, that's not bad. Uh, first editions, I mean, lightly plates are about four bucks, going up to five. Near mints are five dollars, might as well get the near mint. Ultra rares are a little cheap, and only 29 listings, so if you want to grab an ultra, that might not be too terrible, but again, like I said, 
better cards than Odin. Now, Grand Maju that eyes here. Uh, you know, this deck's always going to be relevant. Uh, $3 here going up to 4 for like for, you know, supers here. Now, I told people to grab these at dollars because this card should be $3 eventually. And it was. Now, I want to see how long that took. Uh, we have one year here. So, I guess there's been like threes for huh, quite a bit of, bit of time, I guess. Uh, then we have Tiny Spirit Vashudas here. Uh, these are five dollars going up to sixes. So, uh, you know, obvious. I think Sword Soul play this. It's not a bad card either because, um, you know, it based. You know, you get to summon it for free. It's a level seven, so you can do shenanigans with that. And it's a dark, right? So a dark level seven that special summons itself for free is not bad. Uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Uh, if you if you control a face up not effect monster, you can banish this card from your hand or graveyard. Then target one card your opponent controls returns to the hand. So, uh, depending on how much of the 10D package you play, you also get a bounce, which is nice. Uh, it's not a quick effect bounce, but hey, that would be kind of broken, so whatever. Chaos Dragon Love you near. Now, someone asked me about this, actually. They should hold this. Now, I told people to grab these at 45 because they were way too cheap. Well, near mints are now $60, right? Now, I did t talk about this, I think, four months ago. Uh, so for an old OTS OT, it is seeing some quite a bit of growth percentage wise, right? Six hours. But here's the issue is once you get to the bottom here, right? And the most copies someone has here because we don't really have this copy. We don't really have this copy is two, right? So we don't really have a full page until we start seeing it go to $68, right? And then if you don't want to trust this guy because the 248 sales, that has 100%. But like I said before, if you have a low amount of sales, sometimes people don't trust you. But hey, 100% 248 from the drizzle. I actually have to apply that. I like when people get on TCG player and try their best, you know. So shout out to Drizzle. I have zero clue who this is. Uh, by the way, I'm just saying, hey, congratulations. Uh, then kind of going up to 75. Uh, this is a card that you're going to want to keep and get more of because this card will always be relevant since it is searchable. Like, dragons have the most crazy search uh, abilities. It does banish, so you could get some effects procked off that. However, if you banish only dark, right... Which, from what I've seen, drag uh, in decks, especially like, you know, Dragon Link, oh, play a lot more darks. You can shuffle a random card from your opponent's hand into the deck. Now, when you're going first, and you could do this, right? If your opponent hand trapped you, then they're down to four cards, right? You shuffle one into the deck, right? That's three. Then, when your opponent draws, they have four cards to play with, right? So, depending on how your deck looks, if you have four inter uh, interrupts, right or even three they're done that should really do it right uh, if they didn't even open up ballsy they're good right so the ability to shuffle into a deck very strong card uh in fact i actually want to look at our original secret rares a little bit here too you know golds for 63 listing 73 dollars keep an eye on those actually uh first and near mints are more than okay, fourteen dollars here. Last time I checked, these were like a solid ten dollars. So these are going up. I mean, hey, you, not everybody could afford a you know sixty dollar ulti, but fourteen dollars secret. You know, people are, people might spend that, especially because it's the original print. It looks cool. I remember when this first got an ulti. By the way, man, this was a five six dollar card before the ulti uh, hit, and then it spiked up to fifty. I don't know if you guys remember that. Twin Twisters ulti, just a back row card. In general, eighty-four dollars. I told people to grab them at forty-five fifty. If you did, you'll want a lot of money, right? It's twin twister because it also discards. It's gonna be relevant. Uh, Solemn Judgment Ultimate Rares. Now, you guys know I've harped on this card forever. One fifty. If you got them at sixty to eighty dollars, like I told you guys, I'm not kidding. What cards? In fact, for my longtime viewers, right? Especially look at people like you know Jimmy Ha, Seto Kaiba's bank account, just to name a couple, right? What cards have I hyped up the most? Because this is definitely in the top five. You guys gotta let me know. Uh, Nibiru, the primal being from Brothers of Legend. Someone said, oh, should you hold on to this? I think if you want to hold on a place it, that's fine, but no more than that. $13, you know, they're not done reprinting this card. My issue is, is I would rather trade those in for the older version, right? Uh, $14, right? So, if you could somehow do a swap uh, of some sorts, that's what I would do with your... Uh, Brothers of Legend Nibiru. I would say get rid of them, per se, but swap them for this version. Uh, Infernity Mirage. Now, we got some un a new Infernity card announced, and, you know, I'm not 
educated enough on Inferno to see if it was good or not, but it's definitely not bad. It's definitely relevant enough. And this is recently, so if you're, like, watching this within, say, 18 hours, this this information not be be right. But if you're watching this within, like, 5, 6 hours, and you want some of this Inferno stuff, you're going to want to go grab it, like, instantly. So, Inferno Mirage, a lot of people don't like the shitty gold rares. So, some people like, you know, the normal super rares. You got Lightly Play Unlimited here for threes. Not too bad here. Now, first additions here for non slobber because we have mob plays at six. These are six fifty, six dollars. You know, again, you know, it's eight dollars. Like, if you had these at, and you got them at ten dollars, like everyone did, and you decide not to get rid of them either because you want to play them or whatever, right? You still have most of the money you paid for this card. See how near mints are eight dollars, but you probably have light plays if you've been playing them for a long time. Uh, it just happens naturally. Inferno Doom Dragon Ultimate Rare here. Now, first editions, because that's all I really care about here. Twenty-seven. Near mints, thirty-seven dollars. So, I would actually pick up some of these cheaper light plays. You know, thirty-seven dollars. But if you want to spend a little extra for near mint, is not bad either. Actually, you got another light plate here for a little cheaper. Uh, ultra rares here. First editions are about thirty dollars for lightly played near mints are I mean, you have a uh, no name seller there selling for eleven. About fourteen fifty up oh, from the drizzle. Uh oh. man, that's gonna be an ongoing thing. Fourteen dollars going up to seventeen oh. You know, yeah, about fourteen dollars here going up to like sixteen, seventeen dollars. So the Ferdy Doom Dragons are getting up there. Like this card definitely needs a reprint. Uh Inferno Barrier here, uh I mean, you got near mints for nineteen twenty dollars. Okay. Uh, I mean, you have cheap. Oh no, never mind. Four ninety nine shipping. Ugh. Well, let's look at first eds. First eds are lightly played here for twenty. In fact, let's put lightly played to near mints here. So you have an extremely cheap copy here for twenty dollars. Pick that up right away. Uh, thirty four, thirty four. Actually, we don't have that many. First set listings here when it comes to like lightly played near mint. In fact, I just want to see what first sets are in general here. Yeah, a lot of moderately played. Yeah, I would grab these while you can. In very arch free. Now I talked about this being a a really nice two dollar investment in the past here. Uh, right now, however, four, five, six bucks for lightly played near mints. Uh. $25. Yeah, just grab lightly plates. This card's going to the moon. Necromancer DTs. Uh, $8 going up to 9 This is the highest rate of this card, so that's why people grab it. Really could deserve, like, an ultra reprint or something. Titanial Princess of uh, Camellas. Ulti. Here, so let me go over this. And Mark of the Rose, so I actually have to pull that up. So, I want to go over the Unlimited real quick. $11. I mean, it's not great, but it is what it is. If you want to play this card, you know, 12 bucks for a near mint. It's not terrible. First editions are wiped out, though. You have a damage for 20, and that's actually it. Yeah, there's only one first ed, so these are cleaned out. Uh, if you guys don't know, Crossroads of Chaos do not have first edition boxes. Uh, that and Stardust Overdrive. Uh, the only way to get first eds were in tins. Now, I actually do want to make a video deep diving into that, because I feel that's, in my opinion, extremely, extremely ridiculous. So I want to talk about it. Harpy's Feather Duster, Tournament Pack 8. Man, uh, everyone's got like their German near mints for six hundred. That's actually not terrible. Like for four, but the the difference between English and foreign are crazy. Two thousand dollars. I feel like at this point you either PSA this card, like you don't play this card at two thousand dollars anymore for main deck. Like if you have it in good condition, the issue is it's not even that you can't play it. Play it. It's just if you can the card's so old that you just want to make sure. Harpy's Feather Duster from the World Championship two thousand four. Now, I'm going to go lightly played in near mints here. Lightly played are 170. Near mints are 208. Uh, this is, uh, now, personally, I had a heavy played version of this that I got rid of. Because every time I get this, I'm able to get it for a lot cheaper. But I get, like, the most effed up version. There was one where it peeled all the way into the middle to look like a flower petal, right? So the card was unplayable, and the guy was like, yeah, dude, I'll honestly just take 20%. I'm like, you're not, uh, how about zero? Like, <laughs> he really looks like, alright, just shoot me an offer. I'm like, I'm not, I can't sell it. Like, legally. I mean, okay, the police aren't gonna knock on my door if I sell it, sure, but you guys get the point. 
Deng Long, first of the Yang Zing. Now, nobody's looking at this oddly, which is weird because Yang Zings have kind of been the talk of the town lately. Uh, now, I have a couple of these, and they and I told people, hey, you want to spend two fifty, maybe $3 on this just for the band binder? Go for it. Five bucks for your near mints here. Uh, but this does have first ends. First, they're lightly played. Yeah, they're like, you know, with shipping and stuff, and with taxes, they're probably going to round you up to six. Uh, near mints here, you got one here for four seventy five. Uh, we're actually just going to click near mints here because I want to see more. Yeah, about five, six bucks for your near mints. So if you got these at three, you basically almost doubled your money. Dimension Fusion from DRV here. Uh, you got mods for about 40 bucks here. But then you have near mints for like 53 or $50 here. So I would rather grab the near mints here. Just a hard version to get. Uh, Super Rare looks very clean, by the way. Don't get me wrong. I actually I have more of a thing for Ultra Rares. But like the Super Rare, I've seen it in person. Looks very clean. Now, these have kind of been dissing off the, uh, disappearing off the market. Uh, Lightly plates are like 35, 35, 35, right? Near mints are 40. But when you look, yeah, right, and this was like a $25 car last time I checked, right? I've gone over this recently. First editions, though. Uh, well, yeah, mod play here from a new seller looks like. Uh, the front looks really good from the looks like, but the back... If, if that's actually what's wrong with the card, this is actually a very nice mod play. Like, if if you were wanting to buy this card and have a first edition, getting this mod play right here is not bad. I would actually recommend thinking about that. Although, why not just spend, you know, a little more on lightly played? I would grab the lightly played, especially because once this is gone, it's 85 Near mids, $100 straight up. I'll be honest, for how little, like, look, at, look how many printings this has. It has... Two, I, I think it has three. It's just only two are showing up. So I just want to double check here. Uh, no, it only has two printings. For a card that basically hasn't had a printing in, I think, 15 years at this point, $100, I think it should be 500 My opinion, honestly, for a first ed. The Liquid Duo from Magic Ruler here. Uh, you know, I, a lot of people only care about the first eds here. Uh, mod plays for 40, light play for 54, not bad. 60, yeah, $80, not not too terrible. Secret rares here are about 26. Now, I told people to grab these at like 10s, and I ended up getting my copies because, guys, most people, now, it wasn't bulk when it came out, right? I've seen people say that it wasn't bulk, but it was like two bucks, right? A lot of people didn't take this card seriously. Like, this was the biggest win if you got these at twos. And honestly, I kind of wish I could grab more of these. Like, the gear so the Orcus of Edie Star. Now, for Orcus, they may or may not uh, be benefiting off this ban list. Because I think Harpoor could realistically come to one. And we've seen our last ban lists where we've gotten Engage. We've got Mirage Stallio back, right? Although, that was just a sell product, really. That, that ban list where everything got banned was terrible, right? You know, it was so fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh! When we had, you know... Sky Strikers, Salad, Ding, our Orcus, you know, all that. Because not only were all those decks matter relevant, but they were all very, very fun. Except for Orcus. I don't know how you find Orcus fun. But, I mean, it's at least it's not cookie cutter. You don't do the same thing, right? So it's a fun deck because I've seen people have fun with it. You do different plays. Just not for me personally. So, ultis here are 43 for light plays. But Nermans are about 50 bucks here. Now, this card is very cheap because this card will always be a card that's used outside of Orcus. Because uh when it basically uh when a you know a card that or cards you would uh control would be destroyed by battle card effect, you detach material from this card instead. So this protects other cards, right? It's generic protection of other cards. That is a very big untapped market. And personally, I hope you get I hope Koi doesn't reprint more cards that can just protect other cards for free like this. If the card special summon, though, you can activate one of these effects. Send a card your opponent controls to the graveyard. Attach one of your banished machine monsters to this card as a material, right? It's really nice that it sends one card and does not target, right? So, very, very good for just a summon effect. Then, you know, and it can save itself. You guys get the point. Galatea, the Orcus Automaton. Here are ultis. Now, these are from a verified source. $75 here. 
Uh, I ended up getting two for, I think, a hundred recently. Uh, so, you know, getting those for about two-thirds the price, pretty, pretty nice. You know, guy was happy um, with it. I think this card, if Harpoor comes back, could go up to a hundred-something dollars. Although, I would put my money towards this if I were you guys, because, number one, well, if you get the lightly played, you're spending way less, right? But you just be realistically spending a couple more dollars for the near mint. You know, spending 50 instead of 75. This will go up if Orcus come back. But it will also go up because it's a good generic card, right? So you you, co you cover more bases here, and it's a lot cheaper. And that's why Ding is the play here. Although, if you go for Galateas, and by the way, I love this. It reminds me of near Automata. And if you guys don't know that game, I highly, highly, highly recommend you play it. Uh, amazing, beautiful soundtrack. It's on Steam. Uh, it's very, you know, fun and easy to pick up, right? Uh, it explains a lot of things. The story is phenomenal. But you guys will know when I when people talk about like majestic star, uh, OSTs, they're talk about near Automata. Now, I'm a little bit of a simp. Like I feel like the Danganronpa OCT is very underrated. Like so many bops in that OST, but. You know, eventually if I ever do video game stuff, I actually do want to talk more about the music in video games. If I ever get to a point of life, which I'm probably not, where I could YouTube and just vend, uh, I eventually do want to start doing a psychic channel and doing, like, non-Yu-Gi-Oh! related stuff. I always do Yu-Gi-Oh! related stuff, don't get me wrong, but just some stuff here. You guys know I've passed the idea around along. But if you decide to get Galateas and we get Harpoor to one, I, I think these will hit up 100 20 personally 103 i think you might win more a little bit with these but get go for the dings in my in my opinion here right you have a good sure way to use money to get a lot of money here this will get you at this will get you more gains but i don't think the extra gains are worth the risk now harp horror here super now i end up getting so many of these for like a dollar that wasn't even funny four dollars not bad uh i still think you guys should get these for cheap now, last card is S39 Utopia here. Uh, near mints are like $54 here. Going up to like $56, $57. Going up to around $60. I mean, this card's always popular here and there. So just something to keep an eye on. I think this is one of the older ultis that could probably spike to like $120. So I would grab your copies while you can. Because I feel like this card will eventually get bought out. Just a hunch, though. Uh, along with it, it is a high rarity of a collector card. And it's, you know, relevant in the format at times. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. If you're buying any cards off TCG player, please use my link down in the description below. Helps out the channel to know there's will cost you. Uh, consider being a YouTube channel member and let me know in the comment section below what I'm looking at next Mark Watch. Remember, when you guys alert me out of buyouts, I can spread the word and I love that. Thank you and have a great day guys. Peace.